fleet tracking architecture and tutorial. Here's a quick demo of our solution. Our fleet of trucks are being tracked in real time as they travel. Every time a truck moves, its name, latitude, longitude are highlighted and their travel path is marked. So let us architect and build this solution. Every truck has a tracker device that sends its identity and geographical position every few seconds to our backend application as a JSON message. The tracking device could be a dedicated IoT device or simply the mobile phone of the driver. The Fleet Viewer application receives location updates for your trucks in real time from the backend application. Here you can see location and movement of your entire fleet on a map. Here's the architecture for the application. Location updates from the trucks are sent over MQTT to AWS IoT Core message broker to a specific topic. An IoT Core rule picks up the messages from the topic and invokes a Lambda function, which in turn sends the location updates to Amazon Location Service Tracker. The tracker saves the device location with itself and generates a location update event. Event Bridge captures the event and sends it to a Lambda function. The Lambda function is responsible for sending the message to the Fleet Viewer application clients via the API gateway over WebSockets. In order to send messages over WebSockets to clients, we need their WebSocket connection IDs. These are stored in a DynamoDB table when the client connects to API gateway over WebSockets. Now, let us understand and develop each component of this architecture one by one until we arrive at a working solution. Let's begin with IoT Core. We are in AWS Console, AWS IoT section. From the menu on the left, let us click on Settings. Under Settings, we will make note of the endpoint. This is the endpoint to which the tracking devices are going to send MQTT messages. Next, let's look at IoT Core Rule. From the menu on the left, under Manage, Message Routing, Select Rules. Here we have created a rule by the name of Fleet IoT Rule. So let's click that and uh, take a look. Note the SQL statement here. That's the rule. Select star from Fleet slash location. So messages arriving at this topic are picked up. And under Action, we have a Lambda function. Next, we have the fleet location save lambda function. It takes the location information it receives and sends it to the location service tracker. You will find link to the relevant code in the video description. Next, we will take a look at location service tracker. Tracker stores location of devices and can be queried for current or historical location of a device. Let's take a look. In AWS console, under Amazon Location Service, we select the Trackers option. And here I have already created a tracker by the name of Fleet Tracker. So let's take a look. Okay, uh, let's look at its various options by hitting Edit Tracker. So there is a tracker name. The position filtering part is well explained there and I have left it as default. It essentially deals with accuracy distance or time-based filtering of location update and it is important to enable event bridge events. Now, let us configure the event bridge. In AWS console, we are in the event bridge section. Here, we need to create an event bridge rule. So, from the menu on the left, select rules. I have already created a fleet location event rule. So we select that and hit edit to take a look. So we have a rule name and this is a rule with an event pattern. Hit next. Okay, we leave all of that as default and within the event pattern section, event source is AWS services, AWS service is Amazon location service and event type is location device position event. Okay, and hit next. And under target, we choose AWS service. 
and target is a lambda function and function is fleet location sent to client. Hit next. Okay, hit next and review all the settings and save. Next, we have lambda function fleet location sent to client. It is invoked as a result of location update events captured by event bridge. It extracts device location information and sends it over WebSocket via API gateway. The client WebSocket connection IDs are fetched from a DynamoDB database table. Now on to API gateway. In AWS console, we are in the API gateway section where we have already created a fleet API gateway. Uh, however, let's hit the create API button to see what are the steps involved in creating an API gateway. So for the WebSocket API, hit build and here provide an API name. And for the root selection expression, uh, we'll provide a default one, which is request.body.action, right? So let's enter request.body.action here and then hit next. And uh, among the predefined routes, choose connect and disconnect. Hit next. So for the integration type, it will be a Lambda function and we will provide uh, one lambda function for connect another for disconnect essentially the idea is that at the time of connect or disconnect we need to save the connection id the websocket connection id in a dynamo db database table or delete it at the time of disconnect okay so we provide the appropriate uh, lambda functions which have been pre-created hit next uh, we'll leave that stage as production uh, review all the details and save Let us review the fleet API gateway quickly. So we click on that and under routes, we can see the connect and disconnect routes. These have been configured with the respective Lambda functions. So you will have to make sure that you have deployed them correctly. So select that and under actions, choose deploy API and select the correct deployment stage and deploy them. In addition, if you go to stages here and uh, select the stage you can see the websocket url and connection url websocket url is needed by the fleet viewer application while connection url is needed by the lambda function let's look at dynamo db now we are in aws console dynamo db section here we have created a single table called websocket connections where we store the client websocket connection ids it has a single partition key called connection ID and everything else is default. Remember that you could store the connection IDs in any other database of your choice too. For client applications to invoke AWS services, we need some form of access management mechanism. We will use Cognito Identity Pool for this. We are in AWS console Amazon Cognito Identity Pool section and here we have created Fleet Identity Pool. But let us hit the create button to see the steps involved so we'll choose guest access hit next and provide an i am role with appropriate permissions all right hit next and now provide identity pool name okay so we'll just call it fleet identity pool and then hit next Right, review the details and save. Our Fleet Viewer application is a web page with an embedded map. It receives location updates from the WebSockets API gateway and based on that places a truck marker on the map using a JavaScript library. In addition, we have a simulator web page with JavaScript that sends location updates for trucks to IoT Core to simulate movement of trucks. Note that simulator uses AWS JavaScript SDK in a browser environment and uses HTTPS to communicate with IoT core. Link to code is available in the description. We will host these pages in a S3 bucket, which is configured as a website with appropriate permissions. We are in AWS console, Amazon S3 section, and here we have a bucket by the name of Fleet Web. 
where I have uploaded our static web pages and JavaScript. So if you go to the properties section and scroll down to the bottom, you will see that this bucket has static website hosting enabled. And in addition, you will find the bucket website endpoint, the URL here to access the web pages. Let's look at the permissions tab. And here you will see that um, public access is allowed and that's the bucket policy for accessing the pages. A quick note on the web pages, simulator and fleet viewer. Simulator web page uses AWS JavaScript SDK, while fleet viewer uses OpenStreetMap, AWS JavaScript SDK, and leaflet JavaScript library to place markers on the map. Link to the code is available in the description. Now we are all set. So let's see a working demo of our solution. In our browser, let's open our simulator web page from our S3 website. In addition, uh, let's also look at the developer tools console. Okay. Now, when we hit uh, send location data once, right, you can see uh, in the console that uh, device ID, which is basically the truck ID and a latitude longitude has been sent. And when you hit send trucks location data every two seconds, uh, you can see in the console how the truck location data is being sent at regular intervals. A random truck ID is picked up and its uh, location information, basically latitude, longitude are incremented and sent to AWS IoT Core. Okay, now we access our index.html, which is our fleet viewing application. And here, um, let's go to the developer tools and uh, bring up the console okay and now we hit the view truck fleet in real time this results in a web socket connection being opened okay and we start receiving uh, location updates for various trucks and as a result of that uh, you can see uh, various truck markers on the map right and uh, as they move, you can see a pop up on top of them, which identifies the truck and its latitude and longitude. Right. The dotted line behind the trucks is basically the path traveled by the truck. Okay. So if you uh, go to the simulator web page, you can see that, uh, you know, those updates are being sent to the IoT core topic and uh, they come back via web sockets to this particular web page and as a result we move the truck on this map so that's how we track our fleet of trucks with this we come to the end of our discussion on fleet tracking architecture and tutorial.